Hello, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your host, Crypto Somniac, here to bring you everything crypto related where the rich never sleep. Today, I wanna to talk about something really important. I wanna talk about Ethereum and the roadmap ahead and why I'm so bullish and why I, 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 I like Ethereum so much. We're gonna talk, talk about Metropolis as well as Casper and a little bit about the history of where Ethereum came and and why I think Ethereum will do very well through the end of the year. We have, uh, like we, we've talked about a lot here on the channel, Metropolis several times. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So Ethereum's mission is to become a decentralized platform that enables applications to run off of it, also known as dApps. And that is to say, for example, without any third party interference due to its decentralized nature or censorship and you know, run freely, securely, quickly on uh, through the blockchain. So that that's that's Ethereum in a nutshell. And well, th this slide is actually titled <laughs> Ethereum in a nutshell as well. But uh, just some of the key points here. Vitalik Buterin is the founder and creator of Ethereum. He is widely respected as the smartest guy in all of uh, blockchain technology. They run dApps off of Ethereum, which are decentralized applications via smart contracts. And it is currently proof of stake, which we're going to talk a little bit more about. And they are heading towards, uh, I actually got this wrong, sorry. They are proof of work currently and working to go towards proof of stake. That uh, should be corrected and flip-flopped. Uh, the current supply is 94.5 million with an inflationary rate of no more than 18 million Ether per year. And currently there is a block reward of about 5 Ethereum. So I just wanted to break that down in bullet points. I know I kind of read that directly from the slide, but... Uh, just real quick quick points about Ethereum. I wanted to break it down for you guys. And this is the Ethereum roadmap. So we started in uh, 2015, uh, July, with Frontier. This was the first stage of Ethereum, and it was really just basic raw, bare bones, not a lot going on. Homestead, they added a lot of features and upgrades, things to make it look prettier and enable developers to come in and program on it. And then we are approaching Metropolis, which is taking place uh, basically right now in the, over the course of these next couple of months and then the fourth and final upgrade is serenity in 2019 um, i believe it's actually next year 2018 but i wouldn't be surprised to be see it pushed back to 2019 especially after the several metropolis delays that we've seen uh, but currently it's actually scheduled for 2018 i suspect probably 2019 uh, let's talk about Metropolis, which a lot of this presentation is going to cover. So Metropolis is being split into two hard forks, the first being Byzantium and the second being Constantinople. So imagine it as two different phases. So the first phase, again, is Byzantium, and the second one is Constantinople. It'll take place over two different hard forks. Uh, some of the Metropolis features, and we will cover them in more detail, we have the difficulty time bomb, which will be, we'll talk about that on the next slide. They're calling it the Ethereum Ice Age. We have ZK Snarks to increase anonymity. We have Revert Instruction. We have upgrades to smart contracts. Uh, when will this be taking place? Byzantium will be taking place on the 22nd of September, so in just about a week and a half, on block 4.3 million, or potentially October, uh, I think this should say 12th. Uh, I do not believe it should be October 27th. I should have fact checked this. Maybe I was tired when I wrote the presentation. I believe it's October 12th, 2017, block 4.4 million. And then Constantinople is two, TBA. There's no set official date for it. Probably the end of this year, maybe early next year. No, no guarantees. Uh, but I would suspect shortly after Byzantium. Uh, so let's start with the delayed Ice Age bomb. That is one of the biggest features that is occurring. So the difficulty time bomb was initially introduced in 2015. And what it was, it was basically an incentive to move everyone to the new blockchain when when we had a hard fork or a split and what it does it increases the mining difficulty so much so that it basically makes it impossible for miners to to mine on the new blockchain or the the old one rather and it'll freeze that blockchain and what it this really is geared for is for when casper is upgraded and ethereum is moved to proof of stake so they are basically delaying the time bomb uh, which was initially set for now because the serenity was supposed to originally take place now so they're delaying the time bomb uh, and pushing that back for when Casper initially hits. So one of the key features that will be occurring in this uh, hard fork and Metropolis. Another big one is ZK Snarks, which is known as zero knowledge proofs. And this is something that Zcash and Zcoin uses. 
and I have full trust that Ethereum took a good look at Zcash and Zcoin to see how their privacy features work and be able to implement something on theirs. So it, what it does is it hides transactions and gives a little bit more privacy and anonymity and, and such related properties to Ethereum, which is going to be really important for financial institutions, uh, private equity firms, uh, big corporations, because they, they need privacy. And, and, you know, big, big firms don't want to, you know, have have their uh, positions revealed to the public. So this will help and assist with that. And I have full, uh, full confidence that they took the time to, to, to really understand the different privacy coins and features out there and which ones they've wanted to adopt in their, in, in their platform. So this is one of the biggest features that will be taking place, the addition of ZK Snarks and helping to uh, make Ethereum a little bit more private. And just to quote uh, Vitalik Buterin, to, th this is uh, what what ZK Snarks essentially are in a nutshell. To verify the correctness of computations without having to execute them, and you will not e and you will not even learn what was executed, just that it was done correctly. So that was a th uh, Vitalik Buterin just explaining uh, the process of ZK Snarks in sort of like layman's terms. So you'll be able to tell that a, a, a computation was executed, and you don't even need to learn what was executed. It'll just know that something was executed, and then it was done correctly. So that's sort of ZK Snarks um, in layman's terms. Some other improvements that they'll be making, there's a number of them. Uh, smart contracts will be upgraded. So contracts are currently fed to the Ethereum virtual machine, and they will be making uh, the ability to basically uh, program in the Solidity language a little bit easier for people to to uh, to learn and adopt. And additionally, there will be something called account abstraction, which increases the security uh, related to your both public and private keys, which will assist in the defense and resistance to quantum computing. Quantum computing is not too far off in the distant future. I think I read articles like IBM, Google, uh, Apple, We'll have quantum computing, quantum computers within the next several years. And uh, Ethereum is uh, cognizant of those, those issues that quantum computing can, can really exploit. So they will be increasing security in that regard via account abstraction. Uh, the light clients will be improved. So currently um, you, you can download the entire blockchain or you can go with the light client where you don't necessarily have to sync the entire blockchain on your computer which is cumbersome. It takes up a lot of storage. It's something that, you know, if you guys have downloaded any of the offline wallets for things like NEO, um, any Bitcoin ones, every coin has their own wallet typically, and it takes a long time to sync the blockchain. Uh, so they'll be improving their light clients, which will help, you know, sync that, help with that syncing time and, you know, space that, that it eats up. And one of the last things that not a lot of people mention in the in this upgrade is the revert instruction, which is essentially the ability to cancel or revert a transaction, which will be really important um, and, and have a role specifically with ICOs, not, not, not just ICOs, but it'll have a big role for ICOs because currently you must double spend uh, something to cancel or revert a transaction, which means two times the gas fees or the, you know, the transaction fees essentially. And this will be really great for ICOs that can congest it, get congested and people aren't able to, you know, send their funds and, and get into the ICO, they wasted money and the fee on the gas. What the ICO will be able to do is cancel or revert that transaction um, and, and send that back to you. It'll also give the ICOs the ability to cover gas fees if they so wanted to. So they could essentially cover the gas fee instead of having you enter that in on your end. So this is something that I think is really cool that not a lot of people have mentioned in the Metropolis upgrade. So but something to look forward to as well. Um, now let's talk about the Bitcoin versus Ethereum hard fork. So these these uh, upgrades will take place over two hard forks, like I mentioned, Byzantium and Constantinople. And I just want to stress that it, this is really no reason for FUD or or fear. You know, this has actually been planned in the roadmap and scheduled since Ethereum was introduced in 2015. So this is very different. There will not be a new coin split. There won't be a new Ethereum or an Ethereum cash or uh, another Ethereum classic. This is planned and in the roadmap, and there will be no new fork, or I'm sorry, new coin as a result of the fork, like there was with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So I just want to make that very clear: there will be no new uh, cryptocurrency or altcoin as a result of the split. Lastly, I want to talk about Serenity, which is really aims to bring Ethereum to the masses and be uh, able to be adopted wide and mainstream. Serenity is the fourth and final upgrade to. Ethereum in the roadmap and what it is and some of the key features are really uh, moving it from proof of work which it currently is to proof of stake and that that process we're calling that Casper 
Also, they'll introduce Raiden, as well as Plasma Network, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more. And again, this is scheduled for 2018 with an official release date, TBA. I have a, whole, a strong feeling that this is going to get pushed back to 2019. This is serious stuff. Um, this is this is going to be hard work. This is, like I said, this is going to really take Ethereum to the next level. And I have a feeling that this is going to get pushed back, but uh, still no reason to, to fear. I mean, this, this is this is a large step and a leap for, for Ethereum, and we're going to talk more about it right now. So Casper aims to switch Ethereum from proof of stake to proof of work. And ah, I keep messing that up. I don't know why. That is proof of work to proof of stake. So we're moving it from proof of work, which it currently is. Uh, Bitcoin is also proof of work, and we're going to move it to proof of stake uh, for a number of reasons. For, for, for starters, it's more energy efficient on the system. Uh, there's increased security, which is a huge benefit. So currently, proof of work requires miners all across the world to basically mine the blockchain and sync the entire blockchain on their computers. And as you guys know, for example, 80% of the Bitcoin miners are located in China. So while the currency is decentralized, the miners control a lot of the aspects of it. And the miners are really important for approving transactions and verifying them. And just say for an example, China raised electricity rates for, you know, triple the rate that they currently go. That would greatly affect the ability of the miners to mine Bitcoin. So that, that has an impact on the network. So by moving it to proof of stake, uh, you, you don't run into that same issue. What you have is people uh, having the opportunity anywhere to stake coins and help uh, basically uh, solidify and, and uh, keep the network secure by doing that. Uh, additionally, there's a lesser need to, to issue new tokens, which also helps keep the inflation rate down. There will be faster block times as a result, and transactions per speed, per second will also increase. So a lot of advantages from moving it from proof of work to proof of stake. And I'm sorry that I wrote that backwards in this slide. Uh, a proof of what I called this slide. So proof of work and proof of stake, they work a little bit differently. So again, proof of work requires miners to commit resources such as electricity and mining equipment to, to verify transactions and gain a block reward, which can be, you know, as I said, not not decentralized really. It, it becomes, you get something like mining cartels able to form and a lot of people in China control a lot of the mining power. So proof of stake actually has users commit or essentially stake some of their tokens for a chance at solving the block reward. And again, this, this can be done by anyone that can be done by you and I, for example. Uh, Casper, again, is proof of stake. And this will be a great leap and, and move forward for Ethereum when Casper and Serenity is implemented. Additionally, another feature Casper will do is basically penalize bad behavior on the network. And changing the network would essentially result in losing a portion of your stake. So there's essentially more incentive to validate the network. So I think a lot of huge advantages for moving Casper or, or Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake. I also want to point out this was a quote also by uh, Buterin, Vitalik Buterin, and I'm just gonna just gonna read it word for word. And this is sort of a rough analogy of how to describe essentially that person. Uh, I'm sorry, essentially this process. So imagine a hundred people sitting around a circular table. One person has a bundle of papers, each with a different transaction history. The first participant picks up a pen and signs one, then passes it on to the next person who makes a similar choice. Each participant only gets $1 if they sign the transaction history that most of the participants sign in the end. And if you sign one page and later sign a different page, your house burns down. Buterin added, arguing that this is probably a good incentive to sign the right piece of paper. So this is just a, a, a little example of uh, how that process works in layman's terms. Uh, some of the potential issues with moving it from proof of stake so the rich get richer. So this is unclear how this will be resolved. So for example, uh, people that have more Ethereum can stake larger portions for a greater chance at solving that block reward. Additionally, this is susceptible to a 51% attack. So essentially, someone could buy up 51% of the available Ethereum supply and kind of govern and control where it goes. This is unclear how this will be resolved, but Vitalik and his team are aware, well aware of these problems and they will certainly be looking to address them. And again, it's unclear as how, to, how they will be resolved at, those, at this point. But I just want to point out some of those issues. Additionally, this also leads to question marks for the miners. How will they, how will they react to this? Will they go mine a different chain? Uh, which there certainly are opportunities to uh, mine other cryptocurrencies and other blockchains. 
or you know will they you know how will they respond is, is basically what i want to leave it at there's just some question marks for them uh and the future ahead so this is this really ends the presentation here the future ahead i think is extremely bright for ethereum i think price increase will see a lot of action towards the end of the year i think this the the roadmap has a lot of great stuff in it we covered this in this video here, Metropolis, again, is scheduled to happen through the rest of the year. And then we have Casper next year or 2019. And I see no right reason as to why Ethereum will continue to increase in value. I think the use cases and applications are endless. We can see that we have projects like Civic, Omise Go, uh, 10x, amazing projects built on the Ethereum platform. And I think we'll only see to continue to see more. So I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. We make these videos here every day. Uh, you can also, if you're new to cryptocurrency, one of the best places to start is my course over on Udemy. It's just $10, and you'll get everything that you need to learn in cryptocurrency, including how to get set up on an exchange, set up a wallet, technical analysis, how to perform your own research, all again for just $10. I also take one-on-one -on -one appointments. I have a lot of clients that I just speak to over the phone or on Skype, where we just talk about their portfolio once a week, once a month, uh, every couple of months. You know, I have different clients that, you know, like to invest in different, some are more frequent traders, some are more day to, some month to month. So I offer that service as well. You can click here in the banner of my YouTube profile or in the link below. And lastly, I operate or I control and manage something called the Moon Lounge, which is a hundred bucks per month. You can join uh, next month, I have a link below in this video as well as the, the, the banner of this YouTube profile here. What you got is access to all of my trades, present, um, past, and future. And we sort of guide you guys and help you in, in staying in some you know pro quality projects. And we all make money together. It's a great community. And again, you can join that using any of the links below. You can also get more information on any of this if you email me at cryptosomniac at gmail.com. So thank you guys all for tuning in today. And I look forward to bringing you guys some real exciting new information tomorrow. And hit that thumbs up button and have a great rest of your day. And remember, stay a Cryptosomniac because the rich never sleep.